Hey Geminis, um, this is your August 2018 reading. Just a couple things before I get started. Um, please like, share, subscribe, um, comment below. When you comment also, it, it helps um, not only share your story, but um, bring your energies in for me to connect to. So if you are somebody who you watch me or you resonate with me or you find that I'm picking up on your energy or whatever, it just helps me fully you know, connect more. So just a second thought to that. But either way, like, share, subscribe. Um, I might also start doing the videos in the order of um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do who who likes the most or who comments the most um, so do one or the other um, but either way like share subscribe I'm gonna start to do a, a different way on what order I put them in um, otherwise I've just been going in the order I've been going in because um, I haven't had any other reason to change it so um, like share subscribe comment hit the bell because I do different types of videos so whenever I do other videos you'll be notified of that um, thank you so much for those who have supported me on my channel so far um, with either commenting or liking also um, for those who have felt the need to donate to my channel monetarily um, I'm very much appreciative of that to help the flow going and further help me be able to help other people. I'm sorry, I don't know why this seems off. I like did this before I started, but um, so I'm greatly uh, appreciative of that of any type of support, whether it's just you being here with me while I'm doing my journey and helping other people, commenting, liking, monetary support, uh, those who have purchased readings from me, um, all of that. I do have other types of services that I are that I am putting out. Um, I'm in the middle of updating my description box um, where I do certain types of like healings, clearings. Um, I do Holy Fire Reiki and Distant Holy Fire Reiki for either you or for a situation or to help remove blocks between you and somebody, any type of situation or your twin flame. Um, I'll, I'm going to do a video on my services and also update my description box, but for you guys too, it's very important. Like you, I find a lot of Geminis are really in need of like inner child and shadow work. Um, and I'm really good at doing that. That's one of my favorite things to do. Um, but either way, just look for my video on that or start looking at my description boxes coming up soon because I will be updating that with the different types of services that I do. Um, even like twin flame readings and stuff like that. I just haven't focus too much on it on my channel because trying to figure out exactly which way I want to go with it that I think will not only be good for me but be good for my viewers and the message that the message that I'm wanting to put out um oh this this energy um sun moon rising gemini uh venus and gemini um, if it just resonates you with you or you have a lot of Gemini in your chart um, This could also be for like a cross watcher that energy I could pick up on um, Also check out your Sun Moon Rising and Venus as well or any other video of mine that um, You feel drawn to watch this energy could be for you it, I could flip-flop it and it could be for somebody else doing it to you this I could be read this as love and it could be work or a child or whatever just apply it to your life as necessary some none some or all may apply you know we all know the drill so um just remember that if it applies it applies if it doesn't it doesn't so we'll um get started on it uh I'm trying to ground myself for a second these energies this last like i don't know basically since the last full moon i think it what was it july 27th or something it's like everything started the i think it was like the day before that or somewhere around there was mercury went went retrograde and then there was the full moon eclipse and then it was like the same the same day i think the lion's gate portal opened um and it's just been some intense energies um a lot of downloads and rest and integration and kind of like a roller coaster 
like one day one day being down and needing rest another day feeling like really good and then today is definitely a head a heavier energy for me um i don't know if you guys have been feeling that too um but so with the vibe i get from your your reading your cards that i laid we will see how it goes you know sometimes they don't always end up a lot of times they actually end up not in a way that i think but you guys actually have um a really good and inspiring reading in my opinion like i love your reading in a lot of ways um i feel like you have you know a little a small little something to kind of get through or that's holding you up and i do think you guys are working on it it seems um So we'll just get started. Um, your overall energy under the deck is the Ten of Cups. And I think with this, this is like a different deck. It's like the first time I'm using it, but it's it's got so many symbols and stuff. I'm not even like fully I'm still getting acquainted with it. But it's almost like with this Ten of Cups, it's like you know that your happiness it like it's almost like a web effect. Like everything affects everything. Like it's all it's all connected. And because of that, you know, there's things that aren't working in your life and you're in the process of kind of cutting them down and removing them mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, all of that. And right now you're kind of in that beginning phase of the burning part really of yourself or that part, that part of yourself, um, that you're not quite like the phoenix reborn burn you know coming from the ashes but you're almost there this is the nine of wands like you are right towards the end of that journey Jeez, it's like you're wanting to just drop it all <laughs> maybe i don't know but you know and that's literally um i think that's what the eight of wands was before this was them just chopping everything down and he you know get their this card is them burning it and um almost like you getting rid of like just either in the planning phase or getting rid of things around you including a part of yourself that goes with that um because the the, the ten of wands is literally like instead here you have ten of wands and you have a phoenix coming up um and you're really trying to use your knowledge to decide like your knowledge and your intuition to decide really what that entails and looks at um for you to like feel this is the nine of pentacles you know to feel sturdy and grounded and independent and secure and abundant like like on top of your game again um because you're walking away from anything that doesn't allow you to create this is the eight of cups that doesn't allow you to create this or this ten of cups vibe um and you're going in and looking within yourself i i i hope but i think some of you are even realizing that there's some things going on within yourself that you do have to get rid of that's that's bringing this whatever you're wanting to let go of to you which is probably why you also are burning part of yourself you're realizing that there's a part of you that needs to go to and you're going within and looking at what that is this is the queen of cups you know again another intuitive card like you know what what part of me you know needs to go and what part of me do i need to expand on and grow and focus on in order to be abundant you might even be able to be i'd be having to look within your your emotions and your subconscious because ideally what you want is this this is like one of my favorite four of wands cards like you know, you want that security. You want that relationship. Some of you don't. Some of you like the freedom. But 
Some of you apparently here are attached to something. And, you know, you want that really just seeing eye to eye and that stability. This is what you've envisioned. And I think you've realized you've kind of been putting it in the wrong areas based on things within yourself that you're now working on healing through and letting go. And you now know what to like in order to know what to put your energy into or to know, or to know what to put your energy into. Like this is the six of cups to get this type of soulmate. Like she knows where to nurture and where to water. Like this queen of cups is about nurturing too. Like loving, nurturing. Where she now learned through looking within herself where to put her energy and her emotions and her time and her value in order to get this. And now because you figured that out, um, you know, you know which way to go forward. This is the two of pentacles. Like, you know where to go. You know now you found the source of the passion and the fire to light yours off, to go forth on your journey. What doorway to walk through to get you know, basically this that you desire, whether this is just within yourself, your, your own masculine and your feminine, or whether it's literally within a relationship, like one that is eye to eye. And it's not, I think what your relationship has been thus far, basically to heal the conflict within you and around you. What's at the core of the reading is you have the Hierophant. This Hierophant in particular, which is why it's like kind of so perfect for, for Geminis, is there's so much duality here. Um, you know, you have the masculine and the feminine. You have the light and the dark. You have the sun and the moon. Um, and here, I don't know if you could see it, but there's like two birds, like one's this way, one's this way. Um the sun and the stars, a red and a white candle, maybe a balance between, you know, purity and passion, I don't know, but I get from this, because it has the duality all over it, it's like, it, it's you, you know, you, there's you as the Gemini, um, but it's like you learned some type of lesson or you, you know, you just see the balance and the polarity of it. Or that's what you want is balance. Like you just see that lesson where you're like, yeah, you know, it was passionate, but I just need a level of balance because It was just too much. It was knocking you off balance. Um, and you've got an Aquarius symbol up here. So maybe you're like trying to remember or instill a healthy level of detachment or thinking outside the box on this. Like maybe you're trying to think of a different way of doing things. outside of your own norm like you know the hierophant is very much about you know routine and structure and and doing things of the norm and within what's viewed as appropriate or whatever I really get that it's just you realizing that you have to detach a little bit and think outside of what you've been doing in order to create balance for yourself. 
um, because you've just learned that lesson. Like it's like enough's been enough and you, you just want balance again. Um, maybe you guys are balancing out your own masculine and feminines within yourself. What's crossing you is you have the magician. So uh, sometimes this is seen as an Aries card. Um, but this also is uh, a mercurial energy. So, you know, Gemini or Virgo. Um, but again, you have a certain level of duality going on here. Um, I think for some of you guys that... There's a level of control you guys are trying to get out of. And some of you, you're having a hard time doing it because you might be having sexual relations with this person. And then some of you, I think that this is being denied or withheld from you as a way of control. Um... But some of you, are, what's the obstacle here is wait, is this magician? It's not only you taking action, but maybe you taking action, period, but also, you know, you messaging somebody. But I more get like you're not taking action because like you've learned the lesson, you know. But at the same time, like, you're waiting on this person to message you. Like, a message about, like, love. Or any type of message. Or maybe because you have 27 here, so that could be 9, like, towards the end of a cycle. Like, maybe some of you are being held up and you're stuck at the moment because you have either figured out or gotten a message about an ending. Or you know it's coming and you're just waiting on it. Or you're trying to decide whether you're going to take ac action on sending a message of an ending or communication of an ending. Whether them ending something with you or whether you've decided you want to end something with them. And this is kind of just crossing you on it's blocking you because you either know it's coming or you've gotten this or you're waiting to do this with somebody else. I think it, it's, it's not just one way. It's going to be different for everybody. Um, and... You know, you're having a little bit of confusion and mental fog about this. There's like all these clouds up here in the card. What is that? The more distant past? foundation of this reading which I also see a lot of times as the subconscious is um the high priestess so not only do I think you guys have learned something which could have been this communication or it could just be your intuition um but I think there's some knowledge that you've that you know or that you figured out and it could be various ways like I said through it being communicated through it being your your intuition whatever and I think what it is is you know you have this storks card and you have the dog and then you have mice so I think you're realizing like there's a change From somebody who you thought was loyal, like a loyal companion. 
and you're realizing, you know, they're just kind of that shadiness of a mouse. They just bring you conflict and they're just in it for themselves. They just constantly do and create things that just gnaw at you. Just something is, someone or something is just different than you expected or thought they were. In your recent past, um, you have the Six of Wands. So I think not only is this you feeling somewhat... It's normally about feeling victorious. Um, I don't know if you started kind of just being more around people that were like-minded or helping you build. Like, other people that have the same ideas and thoughts as you. Like, maybe in your more distant past, you realized certain things. And you tried to start distancing yourself from somebody or something. And try to be around more of like-minded people or go more around your family and your friends people who were going to support you. Um, it's weird because you have another mercurial card of somebody taking action here. So it's like, it's like you started to take action and move away from this person or situation. Like here's a snake that was being, you know, deceptive or maybe this, you know, the situation probably was a situation of transformation for you, but you started to take action to really go towards things that are better for you that you can really take care of and be there for yourself like other people who are going to be there for you like here's you coming with your stick and like here's five other people with their sticks burning too so it's not always you giving your stuff to help somebody else like you're around other people who they can either give to you or they have stuff to bring to the table too it's more supportive it might even be somebody, whoever this other person was, this mercurial energy, as you started figuring things out and going towards people who supported you and finding things to make you healthier and feel better again, this person might have even got scared or not liked it, liking it, and they, they went and took off. And who knows where they went. Or this person took off and was doing whatever... Do, just doing something else and that pushed you to go and be around people who were better for you to be around and who were going to support you. I feel like this, this explaining this, this card, which is also you taking action. This is this vibe, this person right here who is still blocking you. 
I feel like you could have been one to leave, but I feel like a lot of you, somebody left. And even though you were you were trying to do things for a little while and you probably still are, you're currently in your mind, you know, this is the Eight of Swords, you're stuck. I think you actually have two of these. Um, I think you're stuck on waiting on this person, whether it's communication of love or whether you got communication that they're ending things or some could even get communication and they're like trying to get you to wait on them or this is just literally your intuition that's trying to tell you what's going on here but and this is also obviously you about taking action just like that other night over there was but it's like, it's like you guys were trying to move on, but you're still mentally stuck. Like the patterns are still there. Um, like the toxic patterns, like this has very much like a devil card vibe. You're stuck. And this card wanted to come out and want, it just want to be placed like, let's see if I can try to show you. So it's like this. And then so here's your Eight of Swords, here's your Hierophant, here's your the Death card that's coming that I haven't talked about yet. And it's like sitting here, which is a coffin. So you guys know what you need to do. You're just having a hard time like you're trapped because your patterns are still keeping you stuck. Your, your mental patterns, your emotional patterns, your, your patterns, your codependent patterns. They're keeping you stuck from transforming from the Eight of Swords to the Death card to ending this, to creating this ending that's in your likely future. To shedding your skin, you know? Like how here, like how this is in the fire and becoming the phoenix, like the transformation. I mean, your likely future literally is the ending of a cycle, a transformation. And this is all about like somebody like the, the main lady came up to and like this is the guy. So this is the counterpart. I'm taking it as this is the other person. This could either be you or this could be the other person I'm talking about. This one that probably took off or that you had to take off and leave from. Um, and I just get like this weasel vibe like he's holding a weasel. Two plus a... 10 to the end of a cycle with this person and then one this is a Mars energy um and this person just caused like grief and adversity with you conflict at one time it was good but it, it was just a long journey This change, just so you guys know, and you have it all over the board, like even in these cards I just went through, this change that you're sort of resisting happening 
because of this um, is actually bringing you like what you want. You just don't know it because your mind and your mental patterns of what you see is stuck. Um, how you see yourself is you have the lover's card. There's two lover's cards in this deck. One of them, they're just kind of like by each other in more of like a visually appropriate way. And then these ones are like having sex and Cupid's shooting an arrow down at them and she sees it and is looking. And what's in your environment is this emperor, which looks exactly like this guy and also has the same vibe as this card. And that's why I say, I don't know if they're holding back sex, like maybe you're wanting sex or whatever, but in what's blocking this guy, his parts are clearly available. And in what's in your environment is this one's aren't. So I don't know if they're being, some of you, you know, this is being restricted from you for whatever reason, whether it's not around you, whether it's control, whether it's whatever, and you're wanting it, and then others of you, like, this is the missionary position, she's being submissive, this person, those other two people, they're, you know, not only do they control you in a lot of ways, when really, let's face it, it's just yourself that's controlling you, um, like, this thing can even pull this thing out of the sand if he wants to, and go fly away, um, but if you're having sex with this person, please stop um, so that your mind can clear itself out and see things differently and this change can happen. Um, there is a level of attachment, like these are some cards that I made up. There's a level of attachment here that is unhealthy and for you to work through. Um, like you're attached to the situation. This is clearly a codependent vibe. You might even notice for those of you who haven't been able to be around this person, you might even notice that like your health has been, been better. Like, your spirits and your health may literally have gotten better. You might find that your abundance and blessings have gotten better since you have been away from this person, if you have. And if you haven't, it will be. Does this person doesn't care who or what they disrupt. All they're thinking about is themselves. Um, like I said before, what's in your environment, you know, here's your emperor again, another like Aries vibe, you know, somebody who they're very impulsive, kind of more action driven passion and, um, I don't know, this person just doesn't look very like thrilled or happy. But maybe somebody who, I don't know, you just see this way. Maybe they're controlling. This could be how others see you. So maybe people see you taking back your, your control. Maybe you're the one blocking off sex from them. Maybe that's one of your blocks is that somebody only sees you for sex or as like a sexual kind of object they don't take it totally seriously and you see that now and you've decided to kind of cut that off maybe so that it doesn't you know control you I mean this is Cupid like hitting them while they're having sex so it's like you know as long as you're doing this you're gonna stay in this mind frame 
And they probably know that too. Um, and this is a decision that you've, you, you either have to make or have made. This is a fork in the road. Either they have made a decision, this person, which means you now have to make some type of decision too, or this is how people are seeing you that you're, you're, I mean, maybe they've even made one type of decision. Maybe they either took off or sent you a message and now you have to decide what, you know, the cause and effect is. What, what is your action to take now? What control are you going to take in this situation? Because I just feel like Geminis in a lot of ways are just tired of a lot of stuff. And they're tired of being played for a fool. They're tired of their emotions being against them. I mean, Geminis are already more of an analytical sign. It's not that they don't have emotions. It's just that they usually process it more of an intellectual or analytical way. So, you know, when somebody already goes in and then, you know, messes with that and uses it against them, like, that just really sucks. Like, and you're probably just really tired of it. It probably got to you you know, mentally and physically and spiritually. I mean, your health was, like I said, like probably in some way or another affected by it. Um, but you probably do see yourself in some way over here improving. Because, I mean, this is you as you see yourself. You see you. And, you know, this tree and this bear is a lot about, um, you know, things improving your health. Right? Yeah. Like, becoming stronger, more powerful. So this could literally actually also be you too, not just the other person. You guys really might be marrying each other. Who knows? Maybe you guys are twins here. But um, that you are becoming stronger and more powerful and taking better care of yourself. It's starting to stand up for yourself too. Um, What's in your hopes and fears? You have the Fool card. You have the Knight of Cups. This is the Knight of Vessels. You have the Four of Cups. And you have the Ace of Pentacles. And so I kind of get from this that I think you're kind of, at least for right now, like you're just done with the situation. Like, Here's the full card. Like, this person, he's blindfolded. Like, he does not want to see this offer that somebody is offering to them. It's almost like, like, let me do these two first. Like, in this rabbit, it's a lot about, you know decision making being tentative about things looking before you leap they also remind us about the importance of friends and family and that's why i say i think maybe when either you or this other person and yes this could be you taking action but i think you or this person did something that might have been a little bit shady i don't know or at least you perceive it as that and it may not have been they might have just been doing what they wanted to do and everybody has the right to do what they want so everybody we're all on our own journeys Maybe they handle it, handled it in not that great of a way. But I think this was you being around like supportive people, friends and family and all that. So I think you are, you know, knowing now the importance of friends and family and people who actually like you remember what being supported feels like. And um, you're either wanting, like you're wanting to make sure that you you can see and you look before you leave. I also think that, you know, you don't, like, you don't want to pay attention to this person's cup anymore. Because, I mean, look at their cup. The fish isn't even in the cup. This is the fish down here. They are guarded like no other, for one. Look at all the armor that's on them. 
they're guarded. You're not getting in there. They're not emotionally available, which means they've got some other reason for all this other than being like true and emotional and vulnerably there in a real like genuine way. So fish are about not only abundance, but like the subconscious, your, your emotions. And this person's cup that they're offering or that you're worrying that they might come back and offer with this message that you're waiting on or got is that it doesn't actually include the emotion, the, the subconscious internal part of themselves. And the when a fish is involved, the, the emotions and the subconscious is only abundant when somebody is cognizant and responsible with those actions. That's when it's abundant. So it's like you don't really want to see this offer or even pay attention to it. And you don't want it to get you like further, even more stuck like this. Because you know this person, for one, isn't even including their emotions in this offer. They're, it's, it's a facade. Like all of y'all is guarding is a facade but there's no way this offer is abundant because it doesn't even include their true emotion subconscious emotions they're not using their emotions in a responsible way this is fake this is a facade because of that you are you know i think blocking off anything emotional with this person because you're wise you know now you're like standing on all these openings. You're like, nope, not only are you protecting your own emotions, but you don't want to hear about theirs. Like you, you don't even want to hear about it. And you're moving forward to this, this new beginning that you have looked before you leapt to like this one. That's actually going to grow into something that is tangible and good for you. I love elephants just have to say like they're so majestic and so ancient and so intelligent and loyal and I don't know there's just something amazing about them maybe you think you're amazing <laughs> maybe you realize that you're amazing your amazingness and you're just like no like no like enough I don't want to hear it I don't want to see it like you want, like, look how calm these waters are in the back. You know, like, look, look how like all over like this person's are when they're standing. They just create drama and ripples and all that. And they're guarded. Like this water that's around you is just calm and you want to keep it that way. And in order to do that, you're focusing on this. You're focusing on that new tangible beginning. Let's see. What is that Ace of Pentacles about? Balance. Whatever opportunity brings you balance and courage and will and makes you feel stronger. And because like, look, here's your sun and your moon again. And this is like a lion that's kind of like a snake. A lion and an eagle. I think this is also a balance because lions are very much about an earthly realm and the eagle is about an air realm. And you are wanting whatever beginning you are going towards, like I said, with this calm water right here, your beginning that you are going to, you're looking now before you leap. You're not sitting in this position anymore where you're blinded. The only time you're going to be blinded is when this person possibly comes to you with this crap. Okay. Other than that, you're taking the blindfold off and you're going to look where you're going and you're going to make sure that that new beginning you have has balance. A balance between lions are also about the heart, like will, the, the heart, courage. A balance between the heart and the mind. 
masculine, feminine, light, dark. You don't want in balance anymore. Yeah, like you want whatever beginning you're going towards. Oh, look, here it is. You want this. And whatever beginning you go towards, this new beginning that brings you a balance between the heart and the mind. Which is funny because that's actually a lion. It's a Leo card. So maybe some of you guys are liking or whatever, Leo. But you want it to be like this. You want this type of union. Where they see you and you see them. And there it's it's illumination. Like this is the six of cups. Like where what she waters grows. Not just this. Not just like, yeah, this is love. But where this type of love got you was here. You want this type of love this type of balance, this type of new beginning. Maybe it'll end up being with Leo. I don't know. Or Cancer Scorpio Pisces. That doesn't really matter. But you want this. This is the new beginning you want. And in the meantime, until this comes, you're going to be giving it and balancing your masculine and your feminine. And the Six of Cups is also about children. It could be like children, childrenhood, like maybe even healing your inner child. But you now know, like you have a better idea of what that looks like. So your likely outcome is the Knight of Swords. Which is funny actually because his shield right here has a lion on it. Got a lot of like lion vibes, like Leo vibes. But will, courage, strength. You might be also trying to have strength and heal your inner desires and your inner conflicts as well because you know that it where it has led you. Like the strength card. Trying to have discipline spiritual discipline or just discipline over like, you know, your kind of human animalistic desires. Your, your ones that are not of a higher consciousness or higher vibration. So not only is this slaying and ending this part in yourself, but this is also you, you know, same with this death card, like ending this cycle, shedding your skin. This is ending this part of you and also ending it with this, this person. I really get in a lot of ways, and this is kind of pretty obvious, but you know, maybe for a lot of you, it's not this person or situation that you're dealing with really, really, I, it was highly karmic to show you your shadow side. Um, this person is your shadow side and that might be hard for some of you to understand. Cause you're like, no, there's no part of me that's like this. Yeah, it is. And it's either completely like them or they are an exaggerated form. A lot of times in our life, people or things that are like us, they come in an exaggerated form because it's through that exact, if it was like us, we may not notice it. It takes that exaggerated intense form to really see the problem, to see the mirror. Like when I had my awakening, my fears came up so intense that I could not ignore them the way I had my whole life. They, they just got worse and worse in a way that they were just slapping me in the face every day. And that's basically what this person or situation was doing. They were coming to basically, you know, cause you'd missed it up till now, like slapping you in the face with like your shadow side. It was ready to be dealt with because like out of your other cards, besides attachment, you know, two other cards, you know, from the deck that I made has expectation and integration. Like it's really asking you to look at like, you know, you're having to let go of the attachment of what you expected this to turn out like. And you have to go inside and integrate that inner child and integrate your twins 
because if they were integrated in the first place, you wouldn't have been attached to the expectation of all of this. You probably wouldn't have even allowed all of this. But because of what your inner child and your unintegrated selves really wanted and felt they needed, you had an expectation that you were attached to. And one thing that's going to help is meditation with this integration. Inner child work, shadow work, meditation. Um, and that's one of the things, actually, it's really not this person that's the hardest to, to let go of. It, it, it's the attachment of the expectation you had of it. That ego part of letting go, like, oh, it was wrong. And that's hard, too, because even when you realize, no, that wasn't it, realizing that you went through all that for nothing and it wasn't for nothing you don't have to think about it like that this was this happened this was exactly what you were supposed to go through you weren't necessarily wrong it was just meant to bring change like this these cards mean and this is pretty much wraps up this whole situation this is luck like this is blessings and this is about a situation that is bringing you a type of karmic type situation like what is this 36 and again, you have a nine. So the, you know, you have, it's trying to get you to end this cycle. You have a lot of things about ending a cycle. Um, says this card tells you that destiny is about to test you. And that with the question asked, the matter is of a karmic nature. And this is about blessings. So when I, like when I told you earlier that you have good things coming for you, you do, but you have to pass this test. You have to pass this test. What is currently blocking you and keeping you here. If you can do that without inner child work, then go for it. You may be able to, but you may not. Like I said, I do have services for that. So if you need help, let me know. But I mean, you guys are pretty right on, too, in your mind. You might be able to figure it out. You just have to go in and not be scared to look at it. Um, but it, it's time to end a cycle, and it's time to find the new you. This is very karmic. It is, it is asking you to go into a new cycle of your life to have a soul lesson. And you have good things coming for you. Like, it is clearly here. But this is a test. Are you guys going to allow yourself to pass it? Because like, here's the thing, you know, you have kind of lining up down here. I was like, well, just tell me another little story. <laughs> and you have the seven of swords. You have um, the eight of swords again. And you have the high priestess. And you have the Ten of Pentacles. No, I'm sorry. You have the Two of Pentacles. You do have the Ten of Pentacles, but this is the Two of Pentacles. You have the Ace of Swords. Um, you have the Page of Cups. You have the Queen of Pentacles. You have the Six of Pentacles. And you have the Ten of Pentacles. And you have Judgment. You have the Knight of Pentacles, the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Wands, the Chariot, Ten of Wands, the Moon. Which I think is funny because it's like once you figure out all these things and you get through with this burden, you now see yourself like look at him. He's looking into reflection and it's like he sees himself how he wants to see himself. Instead of seeing the small cat, he sees himself as a panther. <laughs> I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> you you are what you see yourself as. You know what I mean? And that's what you start to realize. You start to see yourself as the queen of wands and be happy with the sun. And guess what? There's your four of wands. You know, there's your happiness. And you just, you, you more move forward. You know where to manifest now. But we'll, we'll get into like that little storyline um but you or somebody is walking away from somebody some decision was made to walk away 
um, or you need to. And that either left you stuck or you're just mentally stuck about it. Or, or, or there's some either walking away or some level of deceit that you have learned or figured out about. Which might have been this person right here. And, you know, after a minute of gathering yourself up, you started being around friends and family. Which probably even more reminded you of your worth and what you were missing. It was like, what am I doing? But at the same time, you know, you're... It's not necessarily the person, I don't think, that's the problem. I think you're realizing what's hard to let go of is that part of yourself. Like, this part of yourself is what you're having a hard time letting go. Your, your, your identity, your protection, your, all those things you've built, like you can't just all those years, you've put them together in your mind and your being and just poof, they're gone. And you're having a hard time really working through that. Um, because really what's keeping him stuck is his own thoughts. It's not so much the person. Like, they might not even be around you right now. They might. You might be having sex with them. Stop if you are. Um, but it's more your thoughts. It's more your patterns. It's more your attachments and expectations. And what now? And then maybe even as you're seeing it, gets getting stuck on the fact of what you allowed for yourself and all that. And none of that matters. It's an illusion. Let it go. It doesn't matter. Just learn the lesson, take the lesson and let the rest go. And whatever comes up, like, yeah, there's going to be other things that block you up. Just heal through them. When you start to peel off the layers like an onion, other things are going to come up. That's not you doing something wrong or like, oh God, I got to stop that. Just let it happen. Just let them go, work through them, let them flow. But you either need to go away or somebody walked away from you or something deceitful happened and you're stuck in your mind about it. And your intuition is nudging you and, you know, this might have also been secrets, again, that you learned. I mean, you got the Eight of Swords sandwiched between Seven of Swords and the High Priestess. So, maybe there really was a level of deceit and secrecy. Maybe mistress or other person, third party action. But at the very least, there was some knowledge that was learned and you are stuck. But you're also trying to listen to your own intuition about what decision to make. Uh, again, because the Eight of Swords is between the Seven of Swords, the Pride Priestess, and now you've got Two of Pentacles, you might have um, you might have learned that somebody was juggling. But this might also be you realizing and contemplating what decision to make to give you balance. And um, I don't know, maybe somebody even had a kid with somebody, you know, if they were seeing somebody else. Maybe they even had another wife. A wife and a kid. Maybe they were giving to someone else. But that doesn't matter. Let's focus on you. You're trying to go within to see what decision you want to make. And, and, and I think you figured out if you haven't, you need to or are going to. About giving yourself love and doing what you want. Reminding yourself of that child within you. That I mean, Geminis are such a creative childlike energy. And you remember that, that, you know what, that's right. I'm a friggin' Gemini. <laughs> like I'm about having fun. I'm about like, it's not working, boop. You know, like this person, th this person might even be like no other person. Like you might be like, why the heck is it so hard for me to let them go? I'm not usually at this level of attachment, but with this person you are. And the reason you are is a lot of you probably were involved with a, a, a narcissistic type of person, um, which was balancing off your codependency. They play a game. They're kind of the same, just expressed in different ways and different degrees. But, um, and it was coming to heal those inner, inner child parts of you that make you a codependent or even a codependent type of narcissist, if you will. But that's a discussion for another day. 
And and this this person was meant to mirror you. They were meant to mirror and intensify in a way and, and show things in such a way that no one else could. And the reason why in a way you were repulsed in a lot of ways by them, but yet attracted in a lot of ways to them was because they did mirror that part of yourself that you hide from. That part of yourself that your soul wants you to remember, not only to become more of a complete person, but to heal from. To remember that child within, to let them out and play again. Um, but this was a very karmic type of relationship, whether it was literally just a karmic soulmate or whether this was the karma portion of a twin flame relationship. Something obviously either way that had a type, in my opinion, of a connection um, or contract to really help you in this evolution in your journey for your soul. To help put you back on your throne. Like this Queen of Pentacles... It's funny because normally like with the rabbit you have, you have a lot of rabbits in your cards, which is about also exercising good judgment, friends, family, looking before you leave. And normally in the Rider Waite, the Queen of Pentacles has, um, a lot of times they have a rabbit in the card. She's highly intuitive though. And she's got black cats all around her. She's abundant with grapes and lots of gold and she's just on top of her game and she's happy um an equal level of give and take friends balance and he, again ten of pentacles like here's your here's your friends your family your abundance and all that you've got like good things coming for you i'm telling you as soon as you figured out this ace of swords realization and you started playing with your child and your creativity again and being like screw this why am I worried about all this again? Oh, that's right. It was just karmic. I can let it go. And just take the lesson. Because part of you, I think, really got stuck on the fact of like, wow, if it had this much of a hold on me, this much must really be meant to be in my life. And then you got stuck to that expectation when really it was this was just meant to help you realize you needed to integrate yourself. Exactly, like I said, you have the cards of attachment, expect, expectation, and integration. And, and you did. You have integrated yourself. And because of that, you now have balance. And the Six of Pentacles equal give and take. And the Ten of Pentacles vibe. Happiness, abundance, family. Guess who made the good judgment? You did, Gemini's. Hearing that melody... Maybe even be offered, being offered by, you know, someone who gives you this. Or this is just you going forth on your journey and knowing where you're wanting to put your time and your energy. Not only into yourself, but it could be a new love and a new passionate start. The Ace of Wands. I think it's also, I think it's more of yourself. Like you now knowing where you're putting your time and your energy. And you're growing that way. Like you made a good judgment call. You now are on your mission, your new journey, like the Knight of Pentacles of where to put your time and your energy and your value. It was into yourself, loving yourself, putting this passion into yourself. What do I want? What am I passionate about? Look at all these things. Painting, books, all of that. Which way do I want to go with this? All this stuff I just learned and putting down the burden of it. Why? Because now you know who you are. You're like, I'm not a cat. I don't care how you see me. I'm a friggin' panther. I am the queen of wands. You're like, you're like the mother load of like, see how she has all these cats down here? That's all her intuition. She's the head honcho of all these cats. Exactly like this would be the head honcho. You see yourself as the head honcho, which means you probably see yourself as highly intuitive right now too. Queen of wands. She's very highly intuitive, too. Passionate. Knowing what you want. Look at her. She's got a dragon. She's awesome. Happy. Abundant. Creative. The sun card. Again. Again. And the four of wands. Again. Right? Yeah, you got it earlier. 
Like, you've got really good things coming. Like, literally you have to pass the test of getting rid of this person who is standing in the way that you have told yourself, wow, this must be something deep right here. They must be here for a reason to stay. And they're either just karmic and know you're supposed to let them go. Or you merely need to learn the lesson. If you are on a twin flame journey, one of the biggest lessons of a twin flame journey is letting go. And self-love and moving on in your journey. And you might literally be having to learn that lesson, learning of letting go, like truly letting go. Um, yeah, so you might literally be having to learn the lesson of letting go right now, which either way, whether you're a twin flame or not, is completely the same because only through truly walking away, like does that person, basically it doesn't matter whether you are or not. I'm going to do a video on that. I might actually do it right after this. Um, and part of it is going to be like other part of it, or I might do one just completely on like, in my opinion, what the truth about a twin flame journey is. Um, because it's not about partnership. It's not about focusing on that. It's about the self journey and self healing. And then after that, like serving your mission on this earth and Gemini's are perfect for that with your level of creativity. Um, I just want to see if I could find out what about this message card. Yeah. Um, Just, you either will get a message or have gotten a message recently from this person or situation and it just was about betrayal, lies, falseness, like you just realizing something wasn't what it was. Exactly like I said here, you realizing there's change it's somebody you thought was loyal as a friend, but they, they're a rat. Just not a good person. Not only did they bring you obstacles, but this is literally about like a foe, like not a good person. And I don't know if you got it already or not and got that message. Tell me about the messenger card. Some of you are taking action. Um, let me just see what this one card says. Yeah, like there's not only what this other person did but you're taking action in your life and you're creating, you're creating a positive change. You guys have positive change written all over this. Like if you guys like let this happen, don't, don't stop this or block this off. It doesn't matter like a, whether this person even goes and doesn't come back. Like you either, you at this point should not want them back. And if the divine says that they're supposed to be with you, they will transform them and do what they have to do. But as of right now, they, they in no way, and I'm not trying to say this to be in a hating way, but they are a burden. They will cause you illness. They will burden you. They will just bring you down. Look, bereavement. They will kill you. Illness, sickness. Slyness, thievery, deceit, grief, adversity. 
And that's not what you want. Like I said, you might actually find that if this person hasn't been around you, you might actually find that your health has been getting better. I don't, you know, that level of change, um, that level of change that would come in a person, because that's usually somebody with a lot of mental illness or like they're a malicious narcissist or malignant narcissist, I mean, malicious too. That level of change has to come from within I don't really know if I see that or divine intervention, which is possible. I've seen, I've seen stuff like that. I've seen that complete change in perception. Um, but like I said, divine intervention, not Gemini intervention, not you waiting. Like you, you waiting is not going to cause that to happen. Like this literally is a level of, no, like, no, <laughs> this, this is literally to your detriment, your health is on the line here, mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual, especially mental and physical. It probably already was. I don't know whether you associate it to that or not, but this person also, yes, was bringing up blocks within you. This person also was coming, ca causing a level of sickness. Um, your cards. Um... Your oracle card, you have primal, connecting deep within, sacred dance, instinct, natural, authentic, real, organic, creator, catalyst, maker, mother, father, eternal youth, energy, newness, vitality. You also have like hunter, aggressor, tracker, provider, enlightenment, inspiration, epiphany, innovation, Death rites, saying goodbye, formal occasion, honoring lives. Like, basically, these are like, um, you're going within. Listening to your intuition. Finding out what's really going on here. Who are you really? You do not want fake people around anymore. And if you have learned anything about this universe, you know that if you've been attracting somebody into your life who is not being real or who, who is being secretive or fake, then it's mirroring some part within you that you are not being real with yourself, you are being secretive and fake to your own self. Probably to others too, without you realizing it, or maybe you do, but at the very least to yourself. And this was a catalyst brought on by the divine in order to help you transform and, and, and come back to your youth, your childlike spirit, heal your child wounds, Bring on that energy for you so that now, you know, you can go after what makes you happy after your little epiphany that you have. And you could say, you could say goodbye. Honestly, to part, to, to, to certain things in your life that shouldn't be there, but first and foremost, to that part of yourself. And not in a hatred way, but in a way of, like have love and compassion for it. Understand that it was there for a reason. Your inner child when you were younger developed that as a protective mechanism and it worked when you were a child. It's one of those things that works for so long. It works until it doesn't work anymore and then when it doesn't work, it really doesn't work. It works when you're a child. It doesn't work when you're an adult and you're trying to live in this world. And and this is really what it's showing you. This karmic lesson here is showing you like, hey, this isn't working anymore. We've got a test for you. We're bringing this to you, this situation, this person, whatever, to help you realize that something's not working anymore and you need to change it. That's the end of that cycle and the end of that person situation or the very least that part of yourself. Like, cause see, here's like this thing that he's laying off, which seems awful close to what this thing looks like. That's you that's trapped. Now, I really want to say this, Geminis. 
please, 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 please. <laughs> I like that song. Um, not that I like it, I just, it made me think of it. Um, be gentle with yourselves. Uh, don't come at yourself like this. Like this can be, you're not killing this part of yourself, first of all. Death is not about, yes, it's endings, but it's about change. It's about, you know, growth and all of that. Like, energy does not end or become no longer. It changes. Death, honestly, truly is about change. I know people are like, endings, new beginnings. It's change. It's the change in the energy. You're not killing this part of yourself. You're changing and evolving this part of yourself. That is why it's very important to, to do that with love and compassion. Like, you don't have to go at it and be like, no, you know, with holy water and garlic and all that stuff. No. Like, it's with love and compassion. That part of you, that inner child part of you, developed that at a point in time to protect you. It's probably going to get pissed when you start doing it because it's like, yo, I set this up to protect us. What are you doing? Because it doesn't know yet. You haven't done the integration work to combine that communication between your inner child, your younger self, your present self, and your higher self. You haven't made them all align and on the same page and know what's going on, which is the most important for a Gemini out of all the signs. Really, all of them need it, but Geminis, they're just more aware of their twins, usually. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's about seeing the wound that that was created. It's to be done with love. You know what I mean? It's not to be hated. Um, that's just going to cause further blocks. Um, so again, you have, you know, child. So you might literally work with children too, but this is about inner child work. Coming back to the heart of a child. Um, you have Cupid. Which I think is about, you know, accept, accepting love in all forms. Yes, it could be coming to you. But I think once you do this work and you love this part of you as a child, you learn to love and nurture your inner child and be there for yourself in a way that apparently like, you know, either, either your, one of your parents or somebody couldn't be there when they were younger or decided not to be there, whether it was honestly that way or whether you misprocessed something. And now knowing that now you're going to love this part of you, you're going to give like, this is your inner child that you're holding right now. And it could be your own children. You could work with children, whatever. But during this part of your journey, this is your inner child that you're holding. Like I've had to do that with myself during parts of this journey where I literally had to like hold myself. I had to remind myself like I was there because at the end of the day, besides, you know, our connection to source, the universe, God, whatever, you are the only one who can really be there for yourself. And when you're a kid, you learn to look to your loved ones, like your parents, because you think they're supposed to be there to protect you. So you look to them. And if they're not, whether they're really not, or you misprocess that, part of you is like, hmm, you know, well, you can't really be there for me. So you block yourself off to it to where you either block off to it or you're always trying to get it. In either way, you're, it, it teaches you somehow with the way your mind processes it to where you're always seeking externally. And this is about learning this lesson and this integration where your level of ex attachment that you're now expecting is to yourself and to your higher self. That you don't look to external things to soothe you. You hold yourself. You're there for yourself now during these times. And then you don't build resentment for other people who they, they can't be there for you. Sometimes there's a certain level of wounding that I don't care who hugs you and holds you. It feels like nobody's there for you. And that is because you have not developed that relationship with yourself yet. So this is all. And again, you have a second card with a stork of a change in direction. A change. This is bringing you a change, a newborn willingness to open your heart and love and our guidance. Like you do have good things coming. 
And I think also with a partnership too, but with, with just even within yourself and what's around you, it's going to teach you to forgive. This situation brings you the opportunity to heal, grow, and release negative patterns. Hold the intention of seeing the other person's inner divine light and goodness. We will help you release unforgiving thoughts, feelings, energies, and lift you to a higher place of peace and compassion. This is really especially important too for twin flames, but anybody. Creative project. Like this is to put you on your soul, your soul path. This situation is rooted in emotional experience with a family member, which we can help you to understand and heal. In your mind and heart, surround this person yourself in the experience with calming blue light and many angels. Be open to the gifts within the situation and allow yourself to feel peace. Like family. This, like I said, healing inner child wounds, family wounds. This is about you seeing your pattern, healing your wounds, and going on your soul mission. Your creative project. Release and surrender. Blessing in disguise. All right, let's pull a crystal card for you, and that's it. I really hope you guys let this happen. I don't know if you've gotten this message already, or if you're going to, or if you're trying to, like, talk yourself out of it, and you're like, no, they're not as bad as I think. At this moment in time, they are. And that's all you need to know. At this moment in time, they are. If you're having sex with them, stop. If you're wanting to have sex with them, stop. Look at why you're wanting to. What are you wanting to get from it? What are you needing at that moment? And 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 start start providing that for yourself. I guess if it's sex, you could do that too. You know, <laughs> it's usually more than that that we really want. So you get what I'm saying. But Gemini is August 2018. To the bottom of the deck wanted to talk. So you have appetite, appetite, I'm not sure, acceptance. Works at the interface between consciousness and matter to let go of what is outworn in your life. Clear away confusion or guilt. Accept the truth about yourself. You are a complex being with credits and deficits. Recognize these without judgment. Move away from aloofness or social, al social alienation and show others who you truly are use perspicacity I can never say that I don't know you have much to offer by way of service as you access insights for the collective good be inspired discern truth within recognize what is real in your world and restructure your reality don't be deceived by false fronts see what is beneath develop your metaphysical perception things improve steadily Understand that circumstances are merely learning opportunities. It is time to be of service to others. Teach what you know. Your intuition knows what's best for you. And this is a Gemini card, by the way. Uh, Rainbow Minite. The Rainbow Bridge. Bridges this world and the rest of creation. It heals unconditionally and assists the shift to a new level of consciousness. You are a leader. When you raise your vibrations, the whole benefits. De-energize old patterns, release karmic encrustations and toxic dross from your etheric body. This crystal will assist in this. Go within to find your rainbow treasure house. Raise your consciousness to build new supportive structures at every level. Recognize how your soul is maneuvering you onto your true pathway. Absolutely. Apparently detrimental situations offer soul gifts. That's exactly what this was. Re-examine projects and let go of those that are not for your highest good 
or that of others. You see things from both sides, like a Gemini. Always speak true no matter what the cost, but be tactful. You have natural healing ability. Focus it wisely. Letting go attunes you to a realm of infinite possibilities. All right. Yeah. This, I think this is a good reading. Like, for one, this has Gemini energy written all over it. For two, I mean, you've got amazing things coming. Um, you're already getting it a little bit. I feel like you already have. Clean to the past. Stop clinging to the past. Let it go. Yeah. Let this tower happen. This is allowing you to complete you, to give you one of the last pieces to the puzzle to complete you and who you are. Okay? Let this happen. This is like good stuff here. This is what brings you what you've wanted anyways. You were just allowing yourself to be deceived by this lie. This lie set up a certain level of attachment to a certain ex expectation. When you integrate within yourself, you will no longer be attached to an expectation, which then brings in this vibration and frequency. When you are attached to an expectation, you bring in this frequency. Okay, guys? Don't think too deep into this about who or what this is. At the very least, this was karmic. Let the universe handle the rest. This is time for you. Just like with Tauruses, it's very much about that message. This is about you right now, about you healing you and you giving back to others and being around friends and family. And we'll do one more spiritual advice card. What advice do you have for Geminis? I don't think any of you should be dating right now. So if someone comes your way, take time to heal. This person or another person may come back to you. This is also about going within, being in this romantic, this, this with yourself. Be in this relationship with yourself. This is your first card of advice that you got. Balance your masculine and feminine. But you have somebody coming in with this king of wands energy. And it might be right when you learn this and pull away. Okay? Follow me. Right when you learn this and you start to pull away because this is part of this karmic test. This was just the past of this wasn't your karmic test. You realizing this with your eight of swords that's somewhere in this pile of cards on my desk. You realizing this was part of this test. The true karmic part of this test was you realizing it and pulling away and ending the cycle and becoming this. But what truly concrete this in is this person like they come in like no other this is a king of wands but and another you got a lot of leo vibes here i mean i don't know what the deal is with that i don't know if you have leo in your chart i don't know if this other person has leo in this chart or if they just have that fiery nature 
But they come in, and you have like the 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 Knight of Cups. Somebody is coming in intensely, trying to like show and prove their love. And you know, you have the Eight of Discs. Like they might be trying to work on it. On the top, it says careful. Like be careful where you sow your seeds. Make sure it's something that gives you peace of mind with this Six of Swords and gives has an even give and take with this Six of Pentacles. They might be telling you they want to work on things and move to calmer waters and, and balance things out. Um, tell me about this King of Wands, Prince of Cups. Queen of Wands. Well, well, you just don't want to work on it. <laughs> Jeez. This is like, I don't know, like maybe they're now single. I don't know. Maybe they went somewhere and got their supply and felt better. And they don't want this cycle to end. Either that or they've healed, but... Maybe they don't want the cycle to end, but the Queen of Wands, which is you, because this is the King of Wands. Here's you as the Queen of Wands, and I know you're a Gemini, but this is the countersuit of it. They're like Seven of Pentacles reversed and Seven of Wands. Like, um, not investing in this and is defensive. Tell me about the Ten of Swords reversed. Uh, they, they don't want this cycle to end. Oh, do they not want it to? I got the gem. Oh, man. Some of you. All right, listen. I want to say this real quick before I go off because this is a lot deeper than I want to go with it. All right. Because some people might be in twin flames and some karmics or whatever, the only two true test of any of this is um, time. Self-love and time and how they react to that. And, and, and I know people, a lot of people are like, oh, they're not divine masculine. If they don't understand that you're sticking up for yourself, I don't really buy that because they've got their patterns to work through too. I mean, if they're like so many years old, like you don't just throw that out the window. I even, you know, with my awakening, I saw things. That doesn't mean it, I didn't have to work through those blocks as they were coming up. That doesn't mean I didn't have little, you know, mistakes and trials and tribulations along the way of figuring it out. Um, and if this person, which a lot of the cards that I get, I don't remember where, was like, maybe that causes a level of awakening or perception change. I'm not sure whether it's permanent or not. That's the thing. And that's why I don't be like, oh, they had a, you know, awakening and perception change. But some of you, it will be false. And some of you it will be more real or some of the real might come later down the line but none of that is going to matter if you're in true self-love because you're going to want to be focusing on yourself you're going to want to be working on your journey you have things to heal you're going to want to be focusing on yourself right now so it doesn't matter whether this person is amazing or a piece of crap um 
you should be focusing on yourself right now in your journey. And the best way to tell whether somebody's about and not, not forever, because again, just like you're going to have to work through some of your blocks and your patterns, even if they've seen the truth, they're going to have to work through their blocks and their patterns and their fears. This is highly fear based for you and them. So some of you, you're going to like be there for yourself and be like, you know, I'm on a journey. I got to heal myself, blah, blah, blah. And they're going to be like, F you, right? And, and and keep pushing and pushing. You might have to block them or whatever for a little while or forever. Or they're going to be like, F you. And they're going to go somewhere else and just do their thing. And they're not going to change. It doesn't matter because you've been doing your thing. And you haven't been like expectations or attached to it anyways. Because you've been focusing on yourself. Like this is about focusing on yourself now. And then some will like go away and think about everything and then they'll change and, and they'll just have this level of, they're testing you. Not only is, not only is, are you being karmically tested by the universe, but this person is going to test you too. Your higher self is going to, every, you are having one of your biggest tests. And they either know and they're just trying to see what they can get away with or they don't know yet and they'll go away and then they'll see things kind of more clearly go through their own stuff and it could be like forever it could be this short of a span this long of a span that's what i say it doesn't matter if you're on your own journey it doesn't matter but there is going to be a karmic test here of you figuring things out and there will be a level of abundance whether this person another person at the very least in your life happiness abundance your creativity and all of that I think a lot of you or what you're supposed to do is not invest in this right now. Even if this person comes back and is like, I've healed, I've seen the error of my ways. I don't know whether this is a good card or a bad card. Uh, maybe they're not ready for this hurt to end. Um, maybe they come in talking a bunch of crap or trying to hurt you. Or maybe they're like... I'm good now. I see I've healed from all this hurt too. And I'm speaking about how I'm ready to end this cycle and start a new one. Um, because they, they really see you as something and they want to like balance things out and, they see things clearly. They see you for the empress that you are. Like, wow. There are so many crazy cards here. Let me let me just list them off to you. The Lovers, Ten of Pentacles, The Hanged Man, Ace of Wands, The Moon, King of Pentacles, Justice, Ace of Swords, The Chariot, Five of Pen Five of Wands, Seven of Cups reversed, The Empress, Page of Cups, Six of Wands, Six of Pentacles, Death, Ace of Pentacles. Two of Wands, Ace of Cups, Three of Cups, Two of Cups, The Emperor, Ten of Cups, Judgment, King of Cups, Queen of Pentacles. I mean, tell me about this Ten of Wands. Somebody is just coming to offer their thing, and they were either slow coming here. Or they have commitment issues. Can you explain to me a little bit more? The Ten of Swords reversed in the world. I just think somebody sees something differently now. And they see how they see you differently now. Um, and this isn't going to be for everybody. So I'm not going to keep going on it because I'm not going to like build any of you up or whatever. Like, I don't care whether you think you're in a twin flame relationship or not. Your reaction to this, okay, with love and compassion though, as you as the queen of wands, at least in this countersuit, is seven of pentacles and seven of wands. You don't have to be defensive. You don't have to be nasty, but you need to be like, look, I'm taking care of me right now. I don't want to invest in this right now. Have love, compassion. If you're not strong enough, don't have anything to do with them right now. 
If you are, maybe you could be friends. I don't know. There's, th I have to say though, with this level of intensity, I, I don't know if that's possible. And it could even be short lived. I mean, it could be like, oh, can I get her back? Oh, I did. Never mind. This might be a while after, and then they have healed and came back on top, and then this truly is healing from this Ten of Swords. It's just kind of crazy, you know, that the Ten of Swords is reversed. Um, I think it's a cycle they don't want to end. I think they walked away. Somebody walked away. Whether it was you or them. For a third party situation. Deceit. Lies. Toxicity. Which hurt you and hurt them. They were defensive about it. Guarded. By the pentacle state. I think they went in and did some healing. And I think they saw the truth on something. You have the hermit. Four of Swords, the Sun, the Lovers, Four of um, Wands, High Priestess, Six of Swords again. I, I'm kind of getting that they don't want the cycle to end. Like, I think they acted like or their actions showed that they did by you or them, how they reacted if you walked away. More, most of these people, if you're watching my videos, someone walked away from you. And you're wondering whether to completely just walk away from them or wait on them. And they walked away. There's some type of third-party crap going on, some type of deceit or something. And they really don't want this cycle to end. They do want the conflict cycle to end, or at least that's what they're portraying, is that they want that to end. They want to create their world with you. I, I don't know. They, they just have a level of enlightenment. Or at least that's either what they're going to say to you or they really did. But the only way you're going to know and the only way this comes true and stays this way is by walking on your journey. The Empress journey. Self-love. Focusing on yourself. Healing your wounds. Doing your soul mission. What you came here for, even if you're not a real twin flame, there is people who could choose to walk on this on the twin flame journey. Why? Because it's what every human should do, in all honesty. Which will bring about an awesome soulmate anyways. Whether it's a twin flame or just somebody who's like this with you. And that's how you get it. Is through focusing on yourself self-love your journey your soul mission and healing your wounds like you got to stop being codependent because if you're codependent you're you got the traits of narcissism to you just express it differently and you attract people who are what society labels labels as narcissists it is what it is anyways uh please don't take this as like yay whatever like because this could just be like mind screwing stuff too like I said, some of this is going to be false and some of this is going to be real. And it really doesn't matter. It doesn't change your journey either way. You are to focus on yourself and not invest in this right now. You will know when. Not only will I help you follow up on these energies, you can come to me for a private reading if you want to see if this more is to you, your situation. Or, you know, maybe even what the future holds on that. I don't do timelines, um, so I'm going to start saying that. Don't don't ask me times um, because that, um, that can change upon free will. I don't feel comfortable doing that. Um, and I, I don't like doing things I'm not comfortable with. So, um, but if you want to know if this applies to you, if this is your energy or kind of what, like, 
the possible future might look like. This is also dependent on how, what action you take. Do you pass this test or not? Maybe this is even one of your abundance of passing your test. I don't know. Don't be, don't be attached to that expectation. Okay. You get it. I'm not going to keep saying my same stuff over and over again. I love you guys. Like, share, subscribe, comment. Um, thank you again for everything supporting me. Please comment and like, um, because it's either one of those. I'm not sure that I'm going to go off of for the order of my videos. Um, if you want a personal reading or you want to know what other services I provide, because like I said, um, I, I'm hoping by in my September videos, my description will be updated with my services, but you can always email me. Um, and in the description box is my email address. You can email me about those services or there's also my site. You know, if any of you want to donate and help the channel out and give back and all of that, if not, um, give back by commenting and liking this video, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. I love you guys. I hope you're doing good with all these energies. These have been some crazy energies. We've got one eclipse left. It's coming up in a few days. Um, I'm excited though. I'm a Gemini moon, so, you know, I'm excited about this reading too. So anyways, I love you guys. I'll be seeing you soon.